Now I do have to put a disclaimer in this video. The guy featured in this video, I don't have his exact tool. I thought I bought it, but I guess I bought um, a knockoff version of it or something like that. It's basically the same exact thing, but it's not his actual direct tool he's selling, but I do react to some of the things he says and, and kind of respond to them. So just Take this as a disclaimer. I'm not attacking this guy or going after his products in any way, shape, or form. I'm basically just, you know, talking about the concept of this type of knife sharpener. So you guys might have seen this guy all over the internet with this Sharpen's Best Sharpening Tool, sharpening all kinds of knives, claiming that it is a fast and efficient way to sharpen your knife. So I had a bunch of people reach out to me, requesting it on the channel, asking me to find out if this thing is just some snake oil salesman tactics or is this thing actually legit. So I wanna test it thoroughly. I wanna test it every way, shape and form and figure out what this thing can and cannot do. So my plan of attack is to go through each edge that I test this sharpener on and see how cleanly it's cutting paper, then put it under my new Tom Lav microscope that I recently got and look at the edge before and after testing the sharpener on on it to see what this thing is doing or not doing to the edge. Now, I will link the Tom Lav microscopes down in the description if you want to check them out. I'm loving the one I just recently got, and I'll link everything else from this video down in the description. I did not know how to use this sharpener, and that's coming from a sharpener. It came with no directions whatsoever, and then the only way I could find any information on how to use it was online. So that's where I went, and I went and watched videos on it. However, the videos, they weren't, it was confusing because I found some that said use the corner. And the reason why I'm confused, by the way, is because it has a flat side and two corners. So am I supposed to use the corner or the flat side? Well, in the videos, they were saying use the corner. But then I seen in other videos, they were using the flat side. So I was very confused. So I figured I'll just test both. And I was gonna test this thing in every way, shape and form anyway. So it really didn't matter. I started off with a super simple steel that had very, very little wear on it. And it was cleanly cutting through paper, but it did have a little tiny bit of wear. So in my opinion, it would have been the perfect example to use this thing on. But after using it, it did not do any better it did actually worse. So as I went to another knife to test that, I had the same results. And over and over and over, I kept running into the exact same results where I wasn't getting a sharper edge, I was getting a duller edge. Now, if the knife had any sort of real wear in it, and if I used the corner of it instead of the flat side, the corner would dig into those spots and actually tear more steel out. So it actually would make damages even more damaged. So I had to go back to the drawing board and this was after testing probably 20 different knives of all different steels, all different angles, all different finishes, all different techniques. I used the corner, I used the flat side, I used high angles, I used low angles, I literally did everything. So I want to watch a couple of his clips and react to them because there's things he has said that defies logic when it comes to knowing how to sharpen it and, and understanding sharpening. So I want to check some of these clips out. I'm, I only grabbed a couple. You guys can go and find his videos and watch his videos if you want to really see him using this thing. And I'll say this, I, I mostly only seen him ever pick up a sharp knife and do it. And sometimes it looks like it gets a little bit sharper and other times it looks like it gets duller. And then a lot of times it looks like it's not doing anything. And, and we're going to talk about why here in a second, but my point is, is that it's very easy to just pick up a knife that's already sharp and pretend like it got sharper, you know, because you can fake going through paper. I'm not saying he's doing that. And I'm not saying this thing's not working, but I'm just saying I've never seen him grab a dull knife and use it and the edge come out sharp. But let's take a look at this. This has to do with edge angle. And um, really quick backstory, this is a person that was not happy with the product and returned it with a note and he's addressing it. Um, you can go watch it if you want. He addresses the note um, sarcastically, by the way, but then also is teaching, trying to show him how to properly use it. Right straight on so we can get, all right, right now, that sharpener, 
Okay, the tungsten carbide straight line, the open uh, face sharpener is parallel to the knife. That would not be parallel. That would not be parallel. So when I ask people to go about 10 degrees, I'm only asking for about that much. Okay, so right there. First thing, he's not hitting the apex. There's no possible way that can do anything. He might as well have the, the, the angle tip, tipped back the way he had it, hitting the spine, because he's still not hitting the apex. Right now, he's hitting the top of the edge bevel. The only possible way for that thing to work at that angle is if he completely cut off the top of the bevel and then wound up matching the edge the, the edge angle. And in that case, he'd have to do a full reprofiling, you know, so which this thing absolutely wouldn't do. So it just doesn't make sense what he's saying right here. You know, a 10 degree edge angle is very, very, very low. And the only time you're going to want to do a 10 degree edge angle is if the edge bevel was 10 degrees or, or lower, because you want to either match the edge angle or go higher. That's the only possible way for you to hit the apex with this thing. And the only possible way for this thing to feel any sharper or go through paper any sharper is for the apex to be sharper. A lot of his videos, he is at a show or whatever, and he's taking knives off his table and sharpening them and showing how he's sharpening their knife. Sometimes he does take other people's knives and sharpens them, but almost every single time the edge is already sharp. Most people at a knife show are going to have a sharp knife on them. They're not going to have a dull knife. I would love to see a, a knife that's completely dull. But then again, I've watched him. He puts it through a pull through first, which just makes a micro bevel. That's what a pull through does. I've got videos on this. If you guys want to see my impression or what i think of pull throughs go and watch that video i break it down perfectly uh, and and i'm not going to address it in this video but it's just it's it's a nightmare for your edges but let's take a look at this uh a gap station knife if it's 440 or 420 i don't care if it came from Cabela's or a gap station still the same steel all right and i do sharpen that that right there that statement is I mean, I'm sure he doesn't care, but to be honest, like one, those are both coming from the same place. So it doesn't really matter. Both of them are coming from cheap OEMs over in China. Uh, not saying all OEMs over in China are bad, but those ones usually are. Now, 440 or 420, whichever one you're doing, the heat treat's going to be the, the part that matters. And you would care. Uh, especially as a, from a sharpener's perspective or somebody who has a knife, I care whether or not my 440C is 58 to 60 HRC or, or 52 HRC. B2, and I do sharpen hard, old buck knives. And yes, it is a buck knife. And it cuts like this. They're out. They're out there. Uh, <laughs> it slides right up. But yes, it is actually very sharp. I don't want... It won't move without taking the fingernail off. I don't want a knife hair shaving sharp. It's too thin. You can't abuse it. You can't pound on it. You can't pound it through barbed wire. You know, you can't strip wire with it. You can't straight gaskets with it. Uh, he just mentioned it, wire cutters, snips, and a scraper. That's what, <laughs> so I, to me, I want a knife, right? I want a knife, so I want it to be sharp. And to say you don't want a hair shaving sharp because that's too, it's too brittle. That's a ridiculous statement. That doesn't even make sense. But unless if you are trying to pound it through barbed wire and things like that, which doesn't make sense, but let's say that's true. Let's say you want a knife that you carry, that you can pound through barbed wire. Well, then, yeah, you don't want a sharp knife. You want a wedge, basically. But in that case, it ain't going to be sharp anyways. It ain't going to be cutting paper. And then scraping paint cans, that's called a scraper, not a knife. But let's say you want to do that too. Well, then, yeah, you just want a blunt edge then. You don't want a sharp edge. So there's no point in even sharpening it at all because you're using it as a scraper. Hair shaving sharp is just showing you that the that the, that the apex is perfectly done, right? That's what hair shaving sharp is doing. If it's cutting paper 
and not shaving hair, then the problem is, is the apex is not perfectly acute. Now, the lower the angle you go, the sharper an edge gets. It has nothing to do with the finish as far as the sharpness. That has to do with the bite. So the higher the angle, the tougher it is. So what he was just talking about a second ago is high angle edges, which you know, pull throughs do. That's what they're doing. They're giving you a micro bevel. They're not giving you a proper edge bevel. But regardless, I just wanted to address a couple things. Go and watch some of his videos. I just find every video, I don't want this thing to be, you know, an hour long. So um, I find him contradicting himself constantly. Now there's another guy that said he mastered it. So, and I believe him. I believe him truly. Um, but what I think is happening or I know is happening uh, is kind of exactly what he's saying. So what he's saying is that he figured it out finally. The, the problem was, was he was constantly putting too much pressure. He said, you have to almost like not be putting any pressure at all. Like you're literally just touching it, which is the only time I ever found this thing to work whatsoever, but only on edges that were already sharp. These knives were already sharp. And just by doing that a little bit, they would cut paper a little bit cleaner. So I guess that works in that instance, but the, the, the optimal way would be to use a stone or a strop for the exact same thing. Because what you're doing is you're basically just realigning the teeth. And you could do that with just about anything. You do that with a piece of wood. You can do that with a piece of plastic. You don't even have to buy this thing. <laughs> this is a piece of carbide. It's basically just a super hard piece of metal. That's what it is. So in 2024, I don't think it's appropriate to use things like this on our edges because we have so many things that are better because we have steels that are so much better. We have steels that have large amounts of carbide in them. So you wouldn't want to use something just as hard as the thing inside your steel on your steel. You'd want to use something harder. So, and also a piece of steel or a piece, just because it's very hard, doesn't make it an abrasive. It just makes it super hard. Now I understand on like axes and things like that, you'll use a bastard file and stuff like that. And, and that's fine. But when we're talking about our blades, which are in many cases, more high performance steels. And even if they're not high performance steels, there's just, you know, a better way of doing things. In order to properly sharpen a bevel, you want your bevel to have a scratch pattern from the top to the apex. So you're cutting in a new bevel when you're sharpening, you're cutting in a bevel and the bevel is made of scratches on each side. Those scratches go from the top of the bevel down to the apex, creating a microscopic saw blade. And that's why the scratches going from the top of the, the edge bevel to the apex are so, so important. If you zoomed in, to those scratches, you would see that those are the scratches that divide each serration or microscopic serration. And if you zoomed all the way in, it would be a little jagged saw blade at the apex. That's what makes a knife sharp. That's what makes a knife initiated cut. When you're touching the edge and you feel it nice and sticky, that's what that is. So we know that a proper properly sharpened edge, or the best way to sharpen an edge, I should say, is gonna be done on a stone. That is gonna be the most superior edge you can do is on a stone. The second would probably be on a belt, a belt sharpened edge. And both of these have the same thing. The scratch pattern goes from the top of the bevel down to the apex, one runs at an angle, the other one goes straight up and down. That's really the only difference. Now, what exactly is this doing to your edge or what exactly is it doing? So first off, the only way to use this is either one, to hold the angle at the exact same angle as your edge bevel or two, to raise it up. And the reason why is because that's the only possible way for you to hit the apex. For an example, if you, I take this and you consider this is my edge bevel, right? This is the apex, this is the top of the bevel. If I have something flat on it, I'm holding it at the same angle. So this would be the way I would sharpen it, right? If I hold it too low, I'm not hitting the apex, I'm only hitting the top of the bevel. So it's impossible for me to make it sharper. The only way for me to make it sharper this way is for me to cut all of this out until it becomes this new angle. So the only way for me to hit the apex is for me to go with a higher angle. It doesn't matter how higher, just as long as it's higher than the angle that's on the bevel or to match the bevel. 
Now what this thing is doing is instead of making the scratches run straight up and down, which we already discussed is so, so important, it's running side to side because as you run your th this thing down an edge, it's adding scratches going this way, which is the exact opposite of what you want because then that means it's going to be tearing off the, the microscopic serrations that you want so much. And it's also going to leave scratches in the apex, you know, and you don't want scratches running this way through the apex because then your apex is going to be more brittle. Let's say this is your edge bevel, this is your edge angle, this is your apex, right? And these are the scratches that we use to make the microscopic serrations at the apex. So if we came and we started putting scratches this way, right, which is what this does, you're cutting into your apex right here making this obviously more weaker because you're cutting into it. And there's already cuts running vertical, running from the top of the bevel down to the apex. So you're cutting into those as well. So you're not only cutting into your apex, you're also cutting into the cuts that are already in the apex. You see the scratch pattern is running. This is the top of the bevel. This is the apex. You can see the scratches are running at an angle, right? Look at the tip. You see the tip has scratches now going back and forth this way, cutting off the apex, making what used to be a perfect little saw blade or microscopic serrations all jagged and, and messed up. It basically tore them off. That's going to make this apex much, much more fragile. Right here, you can really see it. See the scratches going back and forth this way? You don't see the scratches going from the bevel or the top of the bevel to the apex anymore. You see them stopping before the apex because they've been cut off. Now, I did see some videos. I did find, there was a video online. I found a guy who said he bought it and he finally figured it out. And I believe him. Um, he said it took him a long time and it was a huge learning curve, but he finally figured it out. So I listened to his video and he explained it very well exactly what you're supposed to do with this. So I did that and I actually finally got it to work. But there's a problem. So what I got it to work on are edges that are they have so little wear on them they're already sharp they have such little wear that i think anything could have done this and the way to use it is you basically you have your edge bevel and you use it with with no pressure at all like literally you're just like t tapping it right and you run it down the apex just like that just tap 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 on both sides very gently now, the way it's working is it's basically just taking the teeth at the apex that are starting to roll like this or starting to fold over and straightening them back out. That's basically all it's doing. And the thing is, is that anything would do that. I could do that on a piece of wood. My dad used to strop and this is the way he taught me in the field how to strop my knife was, you know, because when you're doing construction, your hands are covered in grit and grime. So you have an abrasive and you have a leather and he would strop right here on his palm. So, you know, you could do that technically. Um, you could use a piece of plastic for this. You could use probably a piece of wood, but the best thing already exists, a strop a strop or a honing stone. So this isn't doing anything that a strop wouldn't already do even better. And why do I say better? Because a strop actually will be will run the scratch pattern the direction you want. Because when you strop, you're stropping in, on an abrasive. A strop is a piece of leather with an abrasive over the surface. It, it, like in my example, minor diamonds. So it has a whole bunch of microscopic diamonds all over the surface of it. So when I run my edge across it, the scratches from the diamonds go onto the bevel and it goes from the top of the bevel down to the apex, which is exactly what I want. So why would I use this to do that very, very same thing when it's not even doing it as effective or as appropriate. Now, if you have more wear than what a strop can do, you use a honing stone, 
So basically the only time this thing actually worked was when the, the wear was so insignificant, I probably wouldn't even strop it yet. But if I was going to need any sort of a tune-up, I would do it on a strop or on a honing stone. Now I'm gonna give you three recommendations of what would work very well for this and actually be appropriate. Uh, my favorite, my absolute favorite is a resin bonded stone. It doesn't matter the, th how, the thinness or the size as long as it's a resin bonded diamond stone. Now this one is an 800 slash 1200, 800 and a 1200, but their grip pattern is different. So this is like a 3500 grit and a 5000 grit. It's a very fine stone, but it's diamond. So it has a nice abrasive over the surface, but it's nice and hard. So it's very easy to hold your angle on the surface. And it's a stone that lasts damn near forever, if not forever. Now, these can be a little bit expensive, so I understand why somebody wouldn't want to use this, but this is a stone I also sharpen on. So I use these same stones for sharpening, and then this one's a fine stone, so this would be a honing stone or a finishing stone. And I think it's the best tool to hone an edge on. Next would be, and probably my most recommended for everybody across the board, is to get a work sharp field sharpener. These things are fantastic. You can not only do a full reprofiling sharpening on it, but you can also hone. It's got a honing rod that you can rotate for different uh, grits. It has a spot for serrations. You can replace the diamond plates if they wear out. It has a strap and it has the angles already built in for you. So you can, know that you're using the same angle over and over. Now you don't have to use that angle if you want to use a different angle, but this thing is very, very handy. I recommend everybody to have one. You should have this in your bug out bag, in your camping gear, hunting gear, fishing gear, or whatever. Um, now, the last thing I would recommend, and I also think everybody should have this too, to be honest, is a ceramic stone. Whether it's a ceramic rod, this one's from WorkSharp. It has angles already attached and you just run your edge down it. Now, the beautiful thing with this is that this is an abrasive. So unlike this, which is not an abrasive, it's a piece of carbide, this is a, an abrasive, it's a stone. So it allows the scratches from the abrasive to go onto the edge from the top of the bevel down to the apex. And it's so hard, it, uh, it can straighten edges, it can, it can do basically everything this thing's intention, intended to do, but way better. <clears throat> now, you can also get a little ceramic, like this is a little Lansky stone, it goes to a fixed angled Lansky system, but I just buy them to use in the hand. And I can literally just use it just like this. And I can do the same thing that this thing is going to do, but better and more, more efficiently and properly because I'm running the scratches the, the right way, not the wrong way. Regardless, you should always have a strop though. Have a strop, you should have both, a honing stone and a strop. And when I'm saying honing, I'm not talking about sharpening. I know people struggle with sharpening. That's not what we're talking about. I know you struggle with sharpening, keep at it, you'll, you'll get it but that can be a, a, a bigger learning curve. Honing, though, is a lot easier. It's a lot more forgiving. You don't have to hold your angle as perfect as when you're sharpening, because when you're sharpening, you're creating the V bevel. When you're honing, you're just matching it. You're just tuning it up or maintaining it. So it's just very gentle, light passes, absolutely no pressure. You're just running the edge down, allowing the abrasive on the stone to scratch the surface of the edge going from the top to the, to the apex. And if you're up a little bit higher, that's okay. You'll still hit the apex. You just don't want to hold too low. But if you do, the only thing that'll happen is you'll polish the back of the bevel. It's very easy to do. Now, and, that, and this is where it gets to the problem. We're trying to reinvent something that's already easy. Trying to make something easier that's already super easy. There's no need to make this easier. We've already figured it out. We have the exact tools and exact things that work well. And I'm not saying don't continue to try 
and and grow the knife community with new inventions or anything like that. I'm not saying that. Of course, continue to do that. But sometimes there's just things that are sold to be so easy that, that it's just, it doesn't make sense and it doesn't work when the actual way in the proper way is already easy for you. You just have to do it. You just have to learn the technique. And that would be stropping your edge, using a strop. It's so easy to do. Have a strop that will do everything this thing does even better. Just make sure you have a leather, a good leather, a, and you don't have to have nothing expensive. Over here, I got three beaver crafts sitting over here. These things are like 15 to 20 bucks. They're very cheap. Um, and an abrasive over the surface. I recommend gunny juice or stroppy stuff. That's my favorite. They are a bit more expensive, but it lasts a lot longer. It's way easier to put on. It's more effective. It works on more, it's just every, every way, shape and form, it's better. But you can use any stropping compound. As long as it's an abrasive, put it over the leather and it'll work. I think this thing is advertised to do more than it actually can. Now, I don't think this guy is a snake oil salesman that's trying to lie. I think he's very proud of his product and, and, I, and I, it does work to some extent. It just doesn't work better than what we already have. It's nowhere near as effective or as efficient or does it as proper. So it's a crude way of doing it, especially if you understand sharpening at a microscopic level, which I understand most people do not. But if you do, you understand how a bevel is actually formed, the scratches, the apex, and all of that. And things that you wouldn't want to do, even if it possibly made the edge sharper, it still wouldn't be something as good as something else or as appropriate. And in many cases, it could be damaging because you're only making your edge weaker. Maybe it's a little bit sharper, but it's not going to stay sharp. In closing, like I said, I think this guy's very proud of his work and he should be. And I don't want to, to stop anybody from trying to invent great products for us. I don't want to discourage anybody from, from trying to, to grow or um, reformulate stuff or whatever, you know, in the sharpening world and the knife world or whatever. I actually encourage it. So I don't want this video to be discouraging to anybody. Uh, I just think that we, we just, you, you need to understand the basics, learn the basics basics and, and focus on them because if you understand the basics, you, you, everything else will fall in place. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.